that is your Julius and welcome to session 4, the talent guidelines and scorecard. Television is adaptable and can follow different approaches when used in different educational situations. I know, all of you are already aware on how to perform in front of the camera. But today, let me give you some basic guidelines on how to be more effective television instruction talent. Are you excited to get moving? Very good! This session is divided into three important tips to consider. We have the video quality, audio quality, and the voice quality. And later on, I will also be discussing about the scorecard. The scorecard is a tool on how to evaluate your television output. Tip number one. Good lighting is critical. This will help avoid unnecessary shadows or grainy areas in your videos. We have four types of lighting. We have the softbox, umbrella, ring lights, and the LED and camera lights. But do not worry if you don't have those four lighting materials because you can actually create your own DIY lighting material. How? Watch this.
Number two, stabilize your shot. If you don't want your video footage to be distorted, blurry, or shaky, the best thing to do is to put your phone steady. But how are you going to stabilize your shot? By using these equipments. We have the tripod and the monopod. But what if you don't have those materials? Here are some basic tips. If you don't have those materials, like tripod and monopod, use both hands while taking or while holding the camcorder, like this. Using both hands will stabilize your shot. Tip number two. If you are tired holding the camcorder, prop your elbows against your body here. So this will support your hands in taking a stabilized shot. Tip number three. Breathe slowly. While taking a shot, you need to breathe slowly. Because breathing fast will make your video footage shaky. Tip number four. Lean against a stable surface, such as a wall. Leaning on the wall will support your body and will help you stabilize your shot. Last tip. Sit, don't crouch. There are instances that we will be taking videos in a warm view, like this. So instead of crouching, just sit down and relax. Tip number three. Wear a video-friendly attire. But what are those? Wear video-friendly attire, such as pastel colors and simple patterns. Pastel colors, such as warming colors, colors like teal, cobalt, purple, and coral pop on screen. Avoid white, bright red, and all black outfits. All three of these colors pose technical problems. We also need to consider simple patterns. Stick to solids because big patterns are too distracting and may give a wavy or shaky effect on television. Just stay classic. Do not overdress. And keep your jewelry simple. Tip number four. Never wear the chroma key. Chroma key involves filming actors and objects in front of a flat screen of a single color. This screen is usually blue or green. Hence, chroma key is often referred to as blue screen or green screen effect. During editing, computer programs are used to remove and replace parts of the footage, just like what I am showing you right now. If you will wear green or blue while you are on green or blue screen, there is a tendency that only your head will remain on screen. Watch this. High temperatures today, up around 50. Plenty of green on this map. Why can't I wear green, by the way? <laughs> Roby, he's here to help me out here. <laughs> Woo! I can do the weather like this. <laughs> this is the best. Can't use, can't use the green screen. I can do a headless forecast and just like go like. <laughs> Wait, my shoes, my sneakers don't show up either, do they? Yeah, they don't show up either. Oh, a little bit, the yeah. soles of them. But so that's why we can't wear green at the green screen. And ready the unveiling. Ta-da! Thank you, Roby. It's like the Harry Potter cloak, I like to call it, the yeah. green cloak. Should but I do traffic with the green cloak? You should do traffic with the green cloak, too. All right, too. chew it up. Traffic and <laughs> weather together. 48. Hey, let me bring up the seven days so people can see it, too. But you can okay. see it right in front of it because you can see right through it. <laughs> AccuWeather seven day. <laughs> Quiet on... So this is what happened when you wear the chroma key. Tip number five. Provide a three to five seconds shoot pants. Keep acting until videographer call cut. Give three to five seconds allowance before and after you talk or act. This will help your video editor to identify where and how to connect your video clips. Tip number six, 
Avoid Vertical Video Syndrome. Stop shooting vertical video or portrait. This will give you a limited movement and gesture. Hold your phone horizontally or in landscape format so that videos played back on other screens and everything will look fine. Tip number seven, the audio matters as much as the video. Unfortunately, the built-in microphone in most smartphones or your camcorder is both low quality and improperly placed. It is very common to catch wind and unnecessary environmental noise that will compete with or drown out an important audio while shooting video outside. Audio is almost always captured with a separate recording device suitable for the job. So, for exceptional quality videos with superb audio, you should get an external recording device or at least a directional microphone. Tip number eight, be prepared for the shoot. Before you begin recording your videos, make sure that you have all the gear, props, scripts, actors, and shooting locations ready to go. Additionally, make sure your phone or any camcorder has an excellent and that you have enough storage or space to store the footage. High definition video files can get large and will drain a battery real quick. Tip number nine. Now this is the most important. Show, don't tell. Show, don't tell is a technique to allow the listener to experience the story through action words, thoughts, senses, and feelings rather than through the author's exposition, summarization, and description. When you tell rather than show, you simply inform your reader of information rather than allowing him to deduce anything. You're supplying information by simply stating it. You might report that a character is tall or angry or cold or tired. That's telling. Showing would paint a picture the reader could see in her mind's eye. If your character is tall, your reader can deduce that because you mention other looking up when they talk with him, or he has to duck to get through a door, or when posing for a photo, he has to bend his knees to keep his head in proximity of others. That is, showing and not telling using gesture using action rather than telling that your character is angry show it by describing his face flushing his throat tightening his voice rising his slamming a fist on the table when you show you don't have to tell when you show rather than telling you make the reader part of the experience rather than having everything simply imparted to him. He sees it in his mind and comes to the conclusions you want. Tip number 10. Treat your viewers like magnets. How will you treat your viewers like magnets? When you look a person in the eye, you communicate confidence and belief in your point of view. One of the most powerful means of communicating confidence and conviction is sustained, focused eye contact. Sustained and focused eye contact makes you feel more confident and act more assertively. Sustained eye contact is an invitation to turn your talk into conversation. It creates a bond between the speaker and the listener. A connection that is beneficial to both parties. When you look someone in the eye, they are more likely to look at you, more likely to listen to you, and more likely to buy into your message. Never look yourself on the screen. Look at the lens of your camera. The lens of your camera 
are the eyes of your audiences. Tip number 11. Treat silences as part of your lines. Silence means agreement and building connection to your audience. If you ask a question, you pause. Give time for your audience to process what you are asking or saying. For example, you do not say, are you ready to get moving? Very good, because you are asking a question. Instead, are you ready to get moving? Provide some pauses and say, very good. Tip number 12, know your audiences. Audience analysis involves identifying the audience and adapting a speech to their interest, level of understanding, attitudes, and beliefs. Taking an audience-centered approach is important because a speaker's effectiveness will be improved if the presentation is created and delivered in an appropriate manner. Why is it important to know your audience? Knowing your audience helps you figure out what content and messages people care about. Once you have an idea of what to say, knowing your audience also tells you the appropriate tone and voice for your message. For example, in Depp and TV, the delivery in elementary is different from the delivery in the secondary. In elementary, you need to be more energetic and animated in delivering for high school it's more formal and mature tip number 13 do not follow the sequence of the schedule TV production shoots can be very unpredictable sometimes despite your best efforts to prepare ahead of time many decisions will still need to be made on the spot do not follow the sequence. For example, if you are shooting on the morning and your next scene is on the evening, do not wait for the evening to come. Instead, shoot what can be taken on morning setting. Tip number 14. Over enunciation is an enemy. Tip number 15. The star moment or something they always remember. STAR stands for something they'll always remember, and STAR moments refer to the memorable moments in a presentation that stick in the minds of your audience long after the presentation is over. That they'll remember you from your presentation and be talking about at the water cooler the next day. So be unique and add flavor on your presentation. Tip number 16. End with a positive takeaway. How are you going to give a positive takeaway? Of course, by providing a lesson that can be applied in real life, or a summary, advices, or any connection of the topic to their life. Tip number 17. Be friendly. When you smile while speaking, it adds positive mood for the audience. Remember, the quality of your voice impacts your message and how you are perceived by the audiences. So we need to consider the volume, the rate, the pitch, and your process. Be heard. Always remember that you want to be comfortably heard by everyone in the audience. So let's talk about volume. Vary your volume. Speaking continuously at the same volume for any period of time can put the audience to sleep. Varying volume can emphasize words or phrases and can mirror emotional content. For example, what volume would be appropriate for telling a sad story? Of course, a low volume. How about if you're angry? A loud volume. 
this time, we will be talking about rate. Speak naturally. Aim for a comfortable rate of speech. Not too fast and not too slow. Always remember that generally, slow is better than fast. Again, it's most important to be comfortable and clear. Aim for clarity. Work within your vocabulary. We have five types of voice quality. We have the normal voice, the breathy voice, the full voice, the chesty voice, and the thin voice. When we say normal voice, it is in conversational style. When speaker speaks naturally, showing little or no emotion. This is the normal quality of your voice. The second type of voice quality is the breathy voice. The breathy voice is whisper type of tone, an aspirate quality of voice that is very important in delivering storytelling. It provides a lot of air. For example, once upon a time, there was a girl, blah, 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 blah. So that is an example of breathy voice. Full voice is a deep quality of voice which is used when an occasion is formal and dignified. This is also known as the oraton quality. It is produced by opening the mouth somewhat wider and by increasing the oral and nasal resonance so the voice acquires a more ringing tone or what we call the modulated voice. Chesty voice is a deep hollow voice as if coming from a deep and empty cave. This gives a horror effect or a voice coming from your chest. It provides a lot of vibration that is commonly used for old women, horror, so on and so forth. For example, how are you doing? That is an example of chesty voice. The last type of voice quality is the thin voice. The thin voice quality is a thin and high pitch. This falsetto quality occurs only in extreme fatigue, weakening, old age, ill health, or in extreme excitement. Now, we are almost done with this session. This time, we will be talking about the scorecard. The scorecard is the tool used by the Deaf at TV to evaluate your video outputs. It has 20 competencies divided into four domains, such as subject, personality, visual, and technique. Now let's talk about the competencies under the subject. Under the subject domain, we have five competencies. First, the TVI talent should have a mastery of the subject. Second, absence of non-words or what we call the highfalutin words or words that is not necessary to mention. Third competency is for you to be concise or not repeating points except for emphasis. Fourth, did not look at notes too much. As what I have mentioned earlier, look at the lens. And lastly, is innovation. Let's proceed to the competencies under personality. The personality domain also have five competencies, namely enthusiasm and energy, charisma, relaxed, confidence, and addresses the audience. As a TVI talent, you need to be enthusiastic and energetic in delivering your lesson. You need to have a charisma or compelling attractiveness or charm that can inspire devotion in your audience. Relaxed and be confident. 
last competency is that you address the audience. You'll want to talk at a conversational pace. Build rapport, greet them, and provide a welcoming aura. And here are the competencies under Technique. Technique Domain has five competencies. First, flow of information is logical and easy to follow. Next, touch turn talk is practiced. Thirteen, the voice is firm, clear words, and can be heard. Fourteenth, revelation technique is used appropriately. And lastly, the quality of information is just right. And to complete the four domains, we will be discussing the competencies under Visual. The last domain is Visual and has five competencies. Namely, Grooming. Visuals are readable and neat. Your body language. Organized and looks directly at the camera. For the grooming, it refers to the things that the TVI talent do to keep themselves clean and make their self presentable. Second, your visuals should be readable and neat. Next, your body language. That includes your relaxed posture, Keeping hands out of pockets, looking at the interview, and of course, smile. Next is being organized. And the last one is that you look directly at the camera. So those are the competencies on their visual. If you hit all of those competencies, then you can consider yourself an effective an efficient television instruction talent.